What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released the RC or release candidate build of iOS 15.2 to register developers and soon to public beta testers. And this comes a little under a week after the release of beta 4. So in addition to this iOS release, we also got the RC builds of iPadOS 15.2, watchOS 8.3, macOS Monterey 12.1, and HomePodOS 15.2 so no tvos 15.2 rc just yet but i would expect that soon along with all of the others so in this video we're going to be talking all about the ios and ipad os 15.2 rc release and what's new in the software along with when to expect the final release all right so let's go ahead and take a look at the size of this update of course if we go from a beta to an rc or a final it's always going to be a large size so we got a 5.27 gigabyte update on my iphone 13 pro max that size of course will vary depending on your device but it is going to be multiple gigabytes no matter what device you are on and if we go ahead and check out the build number for this update let's go to settings general about 15.2 we can see the build number here is 19C56. And then if we go down to the modem firmware, you could see that is now 1.32. 0.07. All right, so now what's new here in the RC build of iOS 15.2? And the first thing, if we refer back to the software update page right here, you will see that Apple tells us that the Apple Music voice plan is launching alongside iOS 15.2. So once the final version releases to the public, Apple will also be launching the Apple Music voice plan, which is the $4.99 plan for Apple Music, which lets you access Apple Music via voice only, so via Siri. So it's basically for more casual listeners who don't spend a lot of time curating playlists and searching for new music. It's more for people who just bought a HomePod mini and want to be able to just say, you know, hey Siri, play some music for me. And since it's half the price of Apple Music, I think it makes a lot of sense for those more casual users. And even for people who don't have an iPhone or iPad, but they have some HomePod minis around the house and want to be able to access Apple Music's library. So I didn't understand it at first, but now it makes a lot more sense once you really dig into, you know, the price and, you know, different types of users that use Apple Music. So aside from that, of course, we have a lot of new things in iOS 15.2, but nothing has really changed as far as the big app privacy report feature goes. So I look for some changes in here and it looks the same as it has for the past few betas, but this will be a pretty big you know, feature for this update. Really in all of iOS 15, this is a massive feature, the app privacy report, which will let you know when applications are accessing your data and sensor access. Just a lot of good information in here, especially when you click on one of them and you can see exactly when a log of when these applications accessed, you know, your media, your camera, your microphone, things like that. So it's gonna be really hard for sketchy applications to get away with it much longer once this launches. And of course, we do also get the communication safety feature to help kids from seeing and sending explicit photos. So that is going to be big if you have a profile on your phone for your kid. There's also expanded guidance in Siri and Search for those communication safety features. We also have the legacy contact feature finally in iOS 15.2. So this is another feature we heard about at the Worldwide Developers Conference and it's finally making its way here in 15.2. So this is going to be big. If you were to pass away, you will be able to give access to certain contacts to access your information. Also on the iPhone 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max, we get the macro control button down there in the bottom left. You can see you can turn macro on or off. It basically just turns off the autofocus for the ultra wide camera. And then also if we go into our settings, if we go back to the camera section and then down to macro control, you can see right there, we have the toggle for macro control. And then also if we go into the preserve settings section right here, you can see you can preserve that setting as well. So it remains on or off depending on what you last set it to. Also inside of the TV application, we have the store tab down here. We can see different movies and TV shows instead of having to search for them. We also have some improvements to CarPlay. So if you use CarPlay, you will see enhanced city maps in Apple Maps with road details like turn lanes, medians, bike lanes, and pedestrian crosswalks for supported cities. So much more detailed maps on your CarPlay head unit. And then Apple also mentions a few other enhancements coming in this update. So hide my email is available in the mail app for iCloud Plus, and then find my can locate iPhone for up to five hours when in power reserve mode, so when it's powered off. And then we have some small changes to the stocks, reminders, and notes applications. I covered all those in previous videos, so I'm not gonna talk about them again here. As you guys know, I don't like to make the same video for the RC and the final, so I'll go through all of these features more in depth in the final video, which will be coming out 
pretty soon, and we'll talk about that near the end of this video. But also included in this update are some bug fixes. So you can see here quite a few bug fixes. And the first one is Siri may not respond while voiceover is running and iPhone is locked. So that was a big one that a lot of people reported in 15.1. So luckily that has been fixed here in this update. Pro raw photos may appear overexposed when viewing in third party photo editing apps. We also have HomeKit scenes that include a garage door may not run from CarPlay when your iPhone is locked. CarPlay may not update now playing information for certain apps. Video streaming apps may not load content on iPhone 13 models. So that was a big one that a lot of people reported to me. And then finally, calendar events may appear on the wrong day for Microsoft Exchange users. So various bug fixes in this update and one that is missing is the Apple Music battery drain bug. So Apple did not mention that here as a bug fix, but when I looked at the release notes, it also doesn't mention it as a remaining issue. So I would assume that Apple fixed the music streaming battery drain bug. So on a, the past few betas, when you streamed music in Apple Music, it would drain your battery. It wasn't significant. It didn't like put it from 100 to zero, but it was pretty noticeable. So it seems like that was a bug that just came about. I think it was in like beta two and lasted until beta four. And it appears that Apple has fixed that because it is not mentioned in the release notes for the RC build. Another bug that was not mentioned is the auto brightness bug. So this was fixed for me in beta four, along with most of you guys, it has been fixed, but Apple didn't mention it in the release notes, which is kind of strange because that was also affecting people on 15.1 and 15.1.1. So I'm assuming it is fixed here in 15.2, but I will need some confirmation from those of you on iOS 15.1 and 15.1.1 when it gets released to everybody. And the same goes with the storage bug. Apple mentioned this a while back, but they have not mentioned it in iOS 15.2. The iPhone storage bug, some people would see a miscalculation up here up top for their storage remaining. So hopefully that's been fixed. And you know, it has not been an issue for me at all on 15.2, but some users were still seeing that on previous betas of 15.2. So I'm hoping that is also fixed, even though Apple did not mention it at all. And then also the notification center overlapping issue that I have on iOS 15.1 and 15.1.1 appears to be fixed here in 15.2. So I noticed this in the betas. I had a lot of issues on 15.1 where my notifications would overlap and there'd also be big gaps between the notifications. So that appears to be fixed here and still in the RC, I don't see any issues in the notification center. Also for the news application, there were a lot of issues with the news application sending out a ton of notifications that has also been fixed. Now, as far as the performance goes, performance feels great here on the RC build of 15.2. It feels about the same as beta four for me. So really no difference in performance. Although I do think it's a little bit faster and a little bit more fluid than 15.1 and 15.1.1 were. Now, if we go ahead and check out the Geekbench scores, I did run a Geekbench test on this version and I got a 1727 on the single core and a 4793 on the multi-core. So nothing too amazing, but of course that was right after installing. So it could have just been a lot of things still running in the background, but that was my initial result. I will do another Geekbench score, another test when the final version gets released to everybody. Now, as far as battery life goes, I would expect battery life to be better here on the RC than it was on the past couple of betas because it doesn't appear that we have the Apple Music battery drain bug. So I listen to Apple Music a lot on this version. So or on iOS 15.2, the betas. So I would expect the RC to have better battery life than those just due to that bug being resolved or at least not mentioned in the release notes at all. So I'll let you guys know in my follow-up video, unless 15.2 gets released this week, which we'll talk about here in a moment, I will let you guys know how the battery life has been within the next couple of days. All right, so now when can we expect to see iOS 15.2 released to the public? So I think that next week is most likely. So maybe on the 13th or the 14th is when we could see iOS 15.2 released to everybody. Although I think it could come as early as either tomorrow or Thursday the 9th. So I don't think that's super likely, but it is a possibility. Next week is a little bit more likely though on the 13th or the 14th. Now, also, I would not be surprised to see an iOS 15.3 beta one get pushed out to beta testers next week. So I think that's also a possibility. Apple will be going on Christmas break on holiday break very soon, but I would expect to see a 15.3 beta one before then to kind of just have us all testing this version. And then, you know, we'll see all the issues in the new year and they'll push out beta two then. 
So that is just my prediction. It could happen. It could wait until 2022, but we'll have to wait and see on that. Although I would not be surprised to see a 15.3 beta one very soon. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is the RC build of iOS 15.2. Once again, I don't like to cover everything in these RC videos just because the final video would be basically a duplicate of this video if I did that. So I will go a lot more in depth in the final public release video when it comes here on the channel. So stay tuned for that if you wanna see all of the features in depth. But if you guys enjoyed this video and you're looking forward to the final public release, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And of course, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that video when it does get released next week at the latest. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.